So when carrying a large survival kit, personal survival kit like this, simply isn't an option. Today we're going to be discussing a smaller kit and actually two different variants of a smaller kit that can be equally as effective as this but in a much more compact size. So today we're going to be looking at this Condor eye pouch survival kit I, and the kind of build for this. Now I will say I really do like this pouch overall. It's a fantastic kit and before we go jump into it too far we're going to actually be looking at two different variants for this kit. The first is going to be a more aquatic or on the water's edge kind of setup and then the next is going to be a more what I kind of like to call continental but essentially a more land-based one where you're going to be relying more on what a forest would provide you as opposed to the so, wall starting off this thing is definitely not evenly weighted but that's okay so starting off is the multi-tool now i wanted to jump in i wanted to have a multi-tool for this kit because i wanted the abilities that this has especially being if you're near or around rivers or large bodies of water if you're on an island or whatever uh, you get a lot of wash up that you can use or a lot of different trash that you can use in jerry rig to make many different things and having a multi-tool is better for that than just purely a knife but at the same time you have a good knife now this is a Leatherman Super Tool 300 and I did choose a Super Tool 300 because it is a larger multi-tool. It also has a good amount of different tools on it and at the same time it's also a reasonably affordable multi-tool. This isn't anything that's going to break the bank or be crazy expensive but at the same time you still get a really nice saw, you still get a really nice set of um, pliers, you get a nice sized blade get a file for working on things and there's a whole bunch of different items you can use to tinker or you can use this to tinker on into this pouch the only two other things I have in here they're a little bit hard to get out is just a couple tinder quicks so that's all I have in that little pouch and moving over to the main compartment it's not terribly full but rather it has just a few things that I deem that would be really hard to replicate in a survival situation uh, as related to the water so the first is kind of this mini fishing kit. This has some lead uh, shot, split shot sinkers. It does have some more tinder quicks in a kind of watertight um, container. Has some buoys, a larger hook, multiple smaller hooks of different sizes, and another sinker that goes on the line. So that's what's in this little kit here. And I do have some dead space. I'm still thinking about what exactly I want to fill up with. But this is essentially the mini survival hook mini fishing kit that I have devised for the pouch. So next to that, and it makes logical sense, is kind of two things, and not that right now, but um, is one, a large plastic bag, and this is gonna be important for catching water. It also is uh, carrying all the fishing line that I'm choosing to use, and as well, several different baits, lures, and that is not necessarily an absolutely critical thing. You can certainly get your own live baits or lures out of the water, but it's nice, especially in, in a survival kit, when you have the forethought to uh, include some extra things that can make your time out there or give you a little bit better edge of survival. So the next piece is just some good old aluminum foil. And I have this aluminum foil in here for essentially just um, a quick and easy way of making pots or little containers for cooking food or cooking fish on. Um, of course, like I said, this is naturally a fishing oriented kit so it makes sense to have something to cook fish on effectively and easy and that's the nice thing about uh, aluminum foil especially these heavier gauged aluminum foils they heat up they heat up very fast and they will help cook your meals faster so that is the main 
fishing oriented stuff, of course, going back to survival stuff, I have a nice thick Light My Fire Army ferro rod in here. And I didn't want to cheap out on the ferro rod. I went full scale with the ferro rod and uh, got an army. And this is a nice one in blaze orange too, just so it doesn't get lost. And then lastly is some paracord. And let me get this stuff out. It's just, you know, 10 feet of paracord, not a whole lot, but just a little bit of paracord to help um, in building structures and stuff. Now I will say, when you look at this, there's not a whole lot here. And like I said, I think the important thing to realize is that I built this kit um, primarily, I built this kit primarily around my experiences or personal experiences, you know, actually being on the water's edge and learning what you need to have out there or what equipment's really nice to have out the gate. One of the nice things is the ready access of firewood through driftwood. And also the nice thing is <clears throat> the fact that there's a lot of scrap or trash that gets washed up on shores, even on islands on the river. Like when I was on the Tanana River on some of those islands, there was still an amazing amount of trash that was washed up on the shores of those islands that was just right for the picking. You could just go up, pick that stuff and use it for how you needed so uh, when you look at the needs for a continental versus an aquatic um, type of survival situation the needs are definitely less for what you need to have so that's why I really just have you know six essential pieces of gear right okay, guys so I've swapped this over to more of a continental or forest area uh, set up. Now I will say I do prefer a larger personal survival kit. This doesn't have everything I would want to have in it for a forest survival situation. I would much prefer to have a larger PSK, something like this, uh, the Janus survival kit that has things like matches, you know, first aid kit, signal mirror, stuff like that. But because, but if that's simply not an option for you and you do need to have a very small or confined kit, this is definitely my top picks. So starting off, once again, in this little buckle is of course the <coughs> Super Tool 300. Once again, uh, I will say it's not my preferred tool. I would prefer a fixed blade in the forest as opposed to a multi-tool. But once again, multi-tool does have a lot of capabilities and it also acts as the striker for the ferro rod. It's just overall a pretty good thing to have. Not my favorite thing to have, but it would suit the situation pretty well, especially if you know what you're doing with a knife. Next is some snare wire. I kind of just threw this in there because it fits in there. It's not necessarily that it's number two on the list, but of course, once we move inland, you know, trapping and snaring game animals becomes more of a realistic thing. Then of course, we got same old tinder quicks up in here. There's more in here, but I'm not gonna like dig them out with my finger, especially because I'm just gonna put them back in here. So anyways, <clears throat> that is what's in there. So then we'll move over to what's in the main part. And so starting off with the main bit here is a uh, Mylar blanket. This, I'm primarily choosing the Mylar blanket because it's a waterproof airtight uh, cover and this is something that's really important and really hard to find naturally including in the forest and in the forest uh, the primary reason why I'm choosing a cover in the forest as opposed to not so much on the water is that the resources and materials are probably a little bit more abundant than on the water but the processing levels that you have to go through to make those things work for you are far higher so that's why I have more equipment is because in the forest you have to process trees you have to process everything to a much greater extent just like with firewood you know there's no driftwood that's perfectly dried out you know it's been dried out by the hot sun for the last two months uh, you know in the middle of the forest everything's damp everything's wet everything's rotting so the level of processing things goes up so of course just like with the river setup or with the water setup got a plastic bag rubber band handy and so this is just a plastic sandwich bag for catching water of course using it to carry water and that and the likes 
So that's that. Of course, we got same old ferro rod. Wouldn't change the ferro rod. This is just a, my standard for ferro rods. So then next is more uh, cordage. Now it's the same type of setup, you know, paracord of course, but this is a little bit more paracord and it just goes back to that whole thing of uh, in on the water there's a lot of trash and debris that washes up in the forest there is trash and debris but it's far more rare and it's far harder to find so making sure that you have more of your own personal resources is important and then lastly like I said I would definitely prefer more equipment to be in this little pouch I just can't fit anything more in it but is just some um, this is portable aqua but essentially iodine tablets and that's because um, when you're working clear or when you're working close to the water generally moving water is going to be clean it's going to be you know relatively clean you're not going to get any serious illnesses from it and you know you're just going to have an easier time with finding and obtaining drinkable water whereas in the forest you're going to come across ponds you're going to come across lakes and they're going to be dirty they're going to be nasty and they're going to be contaminated so it's really important to make sure that you have something like iodine tablets to help purify that water anyways guys that's all for now god bless and i'm out